Hi class, um, this week we're going to get started with our first um, really significant unit of study and that's on the concept of rhetoric, just understanding what rhetoric is, what it means, and the components that go into um, effective communication. Um, we'll talk about a concept called the rhetorical triangle. We'll look at the components of that triangle and we'll practice with evaluating some rhetoric using that framework. If you haven't already, I, I would advise printing out the notes guide that goes along with this presentation. Um, I think it'll be helpful for you to bring that to class with you this week. So um, Webster's Dictionary um, defines rhetoric as the study of writing or speaking as a means of communication or persuasion. And I think that's a, a pretty good basic definition, but I think um, it's a little bit outdated. Um, I believe that rhetoric today um, is, is broader than just writing and speaking. I think images and you know, we're, we're bombarded with images through social media these days. And so I really think images are a, a key part of rhetoric. Um, music can impact rhetoric. Um, body language can impact rhetoric. And so um, I, I think it's, it's bigger than just writing and speaking. But we'll have a chance to debate that definition a little bit later. But just starting with this ba basic definition, um, I think, is a good place. So I, I would like for you to write that down in your notes guide, please. The rhetorical triangle um, is a framework for analyzing um, some of the significant components of rhetoric. Um, it allows us to take a look at how the message is impacted by both the speaker and the audience. And then, of course, the context in which that occurs is also an important part. So let's start by talking about the speaker for a minute. Um, the speaker, the communicator, um, you know, what do we know about this person and how does that impact the message? Um, you know, should we care what this person has to say or not? Are we influenced by the message or not? And so perhaps we look at the identity of the person and the experiences of the person as a way to determine if what they have to say is important to me or trustworthy. Um, we look at credentials. Does this person have, um, has this person studied the topic, have personal experience with the topic? Um, what might their point of view be? And what might their bias or biases be? And so those are all things that we, whether consciously or subconsciously, consider when we're analyzing and thinking about the speaker. Now let's move to the audience. Um, when we're talking about audience, we want to look at what influences the reception of the message. And so, um, you know, how knowledgeable is the audience on the topic? Um, what are the demographics of the audience? You know, is it an older audience or is it um, a female audience or is this message um, aimed at a certain group of people based on their education level or their economic level. And so um, those are things to consider. Also, um, considering receptivity of the message. Do you anticipate the audience to be hostile and need to be convinced of a point of view? Or is this a friendly audience and where you're just talking to, you know, um, speaking to the, the choir, so to speak, uh, or preaching to the choir, so to speak, um, or is it a neutral audience? And so those are things the speaker has to consider, and those are things that impact how the audience might receive the message. And then purpose or message, um, you know, really what's at the core of this communication? You know, what's the topic? Why is this communication being um, presented? 
Is it to um, sell you something? Is it to um, garner support for an idea or a movement? Um, what is the intended or hopeful outcome of this communication? So those are things to consider there. And then within the rhetorical triangle, um, these, these items were listed in the middle of that triangle on the earlier slide. Um, lots of other things come to play. Um, these things deal with context and, and how the message is delivered. So we're going to talk about each of these in a little more detail here. So context just means the time, the place, the circumstance, the medium, and um, maybe thinking about risks and rewards of the the opportunity to speak in this way. Um, you know, time might be, was this a speech delivered in 2020 during the pandemic? Or, you know, was it pre-pandemic? Or was it 100 years ago? Um, is it a speech in front of actual live people? Is it um, written communication that's going to be in a newspaper? Or is it on a website or a blog, um, a podcast? Um, all of those things, you know, are part of context. Then we look at tone. Um, more than just the words spoken, what is the tone of the speaker? We think of tone is sometimes easier to pick up on in verbal speech. But there's also tone that's perceivable in written speech. Um, and, you know, just looking at sentence structure, word choice, um, you know, you can pick up on a communicator's tone. Is it serious? Is it humorous? Um, is there sarcasm involved? Um, those are some things to maybe consider when you're analyzing communication. Another thing is mode. Um, you know, mode goes into perhaps the the purpose of the the speech. It's connected to that idea, but you know, is it a story, a personal story, like a narration, a narrative? Um, is it some kind of cause and effect um, setup of the communication? Um, argument, trying to convince somebody of a point of view. So those are things to, that might influence the message. Um, devices used, you probably remember studying these in your high school English classes. Metaphors are very common, um, analogies. Um, diction just means word choice, and diction um, is really important. Um, you can pick up on tone a lot by looking at word choice. Um, Symbolism, maybe even if you're giving a speech, you have images in the background that support your speech. So imagery, certainly imagery is important in social media posts and blog posts, things like that. And then, of course, the last thing that we're going to spend a little more time on is appeals, rhetorical appeals. These are very um, traditional, um, go way back to classic rhetoric from the the classical age of Rome, Rome and Greece, um, but they fall into three categories, ethos, pathos, and logos. And we're going to talk a little bit more about those on the next slide. So the three dominant appeals messages, or methods, excuse me, um, ethos, pathos, logos. So ethos, if you think about it, break the word down, it, re it deals with ethics. The, the right and wrong, the credibility, the um, trustworthiness of the speaker and the message. Pathos deals with emotion. Think of words like sympathy or empathy. So anytime a speaker tries to um, connect with the audience's emotion in some way, maybe it's anger, maybe it's sadness, maybe it's um, excitement, you know, um, but those are ways that a speaker or a, a message can be um, enhanced by tapping into emotion. And then the third one I have listed here is logos, and the word logic comes out of that. This is just rational, um, fact-driven, 
data-driven kind of information. And so those are other ways to support the message and convince the audience. So um, what I want you to do now, we're going to have a little bit of fun. Um, we're going to look at just a, a lighthearted message um, as a way to kind of get started with learning to analyze rhetoric. Um, have a commercial here. It's a bubbly commercial. Some of you have probably seen it. Um, and what I'd like you to do is, as you're watching this commercial, I want you to think about um, the components of the rhetorical triangle, the speaker, the audience, the purpose, and maybe any of those things in the middle, devices or tone, context, mode. Think about any of those that might impact whether or not the commercial um, is effective. Okay, so here goes. Ooh, Blackberry Buble, my favorite. You mean bubbly. No, I mean Buble. You're Michael Buble. That's a bubbly. She's right, Michael Buble. It's pronounced Buble. I know, thanks. Dave. Can I have your autograph, Mr. Bubbly? It's Buble. Buble? It's Bubbly! Sparkling water. Crack a smile. Michael, don't do that. So now that you've had a chance to, to watch the commercial, certainly you can go back, use the link, watch it again if you'd like to. Um, I'd like for you to um, complete the analysis activity that's at the bottom of your notes guide. So if you'll do that, and please bring that with you to class this week, um, we're going to use that in some of our discussion. So I look forward to seeing you in class this week. Feel free to email me. Um, reach out if you have any questions about this assignment or, you know, what we're going to be doing this week. I look forward to seeing you guys. Bye.